What's up guys, welcome back to another InScape video. In this video, we're gonna look over the general settings because hey, whenever you jump into a new program, you need to know what some of the basic settings are. These are not the settings that we would use to change the way the, the image looks, the, the window, everything in InScape, what that looks like. That's gonna be visual settings. I'm gonna save that for a separate video because there are so many details that go into that. I, I don't want to put these two together. So this video is specifically for the general settings that apply to InScape. And you'll find this in the InScape tab and in general settings. I don't have uh, InScape open yet, but we will in just a second. Once I click on general settings, we see I've got a number of different options here to, to work through with, with each one having their own set of things to look at. Before, uh, a number of updates ago, InScape had general settings and visual settings smashed together into one. It was a lot of settings, a lot to look at, and it was kind of hard to understand what was going on because of that. So now it's nice to have general settings split up from visual settings. So we'll say before we get right into it, if you do learn something in this video, if you would demolish that like button, it really helps me out and tell me that I'm actually helping you out. That really helps me a lot. So jumping right into it, looking at the general settings, the first thing we have to look at is customization. Now you don't have to customize this at all. And this customization is going to refer to the, the screen itself of InScape, the window of InScape. So to look at this, I will start InScape. And once I do that, you can see the window itself. And so the loading screen, as you can see, it says loading. So this is, what we see here will be our loading screen. So you have the option of customizing what this is. So what I can do now is, I'm actually, I've got an image here. It's just a basic loading screen. And again, this can be any image that you want. And start it again, and we can see there's my loading screen. It's it is, it's just an image. You can use any image you want. Typically, you'd want to use an image that is scaled to the window you would like to look at, but in this case, just because the aspect ratio is the same, I can stretch the window and it's, it's all fine. So that's going to be the loading screen. So the interface overlay is actually a bit different. So with InScape open, I can go to my interface overlay. And what is interface overlay? It's actually, if you're familiar with a HUD or a heads-up display or anything like that in a movie, a game, anything like that, it's something that's, it's kind of augmented reality, but it's over the top of what you're looking at. And it's almost like in front of you, it's before you see anything else, it's right there. So again, that's gonna be another simple image. And to get the image that you want, you're probably gonna to wanna to use a PNG, so it will translate the transparency built into that, tran uh, that PNG file to actually show up correctly. Otherwise, you would just see this full image over your of your actual window while you're operating Inkscape. So I'm gonna actually go and go to interface overlay and I've got just this basic overlay. It's, it's, there's nothing special to it. And once I open Inkscape up again, I can see now I've got this overlay image on top. Now that, you know, maybe this is something you wanna do if you're trying to do a specific walkthrough. I, I haven't necessarily used this because it hasn't been available to us for all that long, but still, um, there are some there are some key places you might want to use this. Uh, primarily, if you if you're working for a firm, I would put your logo. You know, if you're doing something like a static image, that would work. But even this would work through a walkthrough, and it would film and it would it would record the, the overlay that way. So I would definitely put a logo, something specific. Maybe there's some image that you want to display all the time. You can actually move this around. As you can see in this window, I can locate this in different quadrants and different places throughout the, the image itself, or the window of InScape itself. As you can see now, I've got it at the top left. Well, it might look better in the center. So that's image overlay. So finally, we've got icon. And so icon, it's, it's just like any other icon. It's going to be what's at the top left. In this case, there's Revit icon there. And if I've got my InScape window open, the default icon is just that InScape logo. You know, if you want to go to the trouble of changing that, great, do it. You know, it's customization, great. And custom title. This is nice because normally the the name of your InScape window is it's just the view that you open. In this case, I have the view InScape Start. So if I go back to my window, I can see it's got InScape View and then InScape Start. So maybe what I want to do is add a custom title. So I can just type in anything I want. Maybe it's custom title, 
just for the sake of this, and if we go back to our window, we can see now custom title. Again, I, I wouldn't necessarily do this for every single thing, every single presentation for Inkscape because it's a little bit overkill. It's kind of up to you. But really, it's you know, if I'm doing a specific export or something like that, it would be nice to have maybe a specific icon. You know, you've got a title that fits what you're doing. That's all, that's all great. And again, you can save this into the settings or you can use this in the settings. Perfect. I don't necessarily need those. Whatever, not a big deal. Moving on from customization, we've got input. So input, this is this is the actual inputs that you input to make Inkscape work, to move around, to function within it. And that has to do with the mouse speed, how, how quick you move around and look around, uh, the mouse smoothing, how smooth is it, the movement speed itself, like you actually moving and walking and flying, uh, the spectator height. You know how tall is the person? Like when you're when you're specifically in walk mode, how tall is it? Where is that camera? Typically, that's going to be at like a typical five foot eight person's height, and it's going to be at their eye level. Okay, you've got the width. You know, if you change this width so much, maybe you can walk through certain things. Maybe you can't walk through. Certain, it's just that type of thing, and you're free to to change this however you want. You always have the option of setting the value here or resetting a default. If you don't know what it should be, always reset it. It's very simple. If for some reason you want to invert the way you look left and right, how that works, you can always do that. I'm going to start Inkscape again so we can look at it. But honestly, you know, you, yeah, you can invert it if you want. If, they, if for some reason inverting the x-axis or the y-axis, the way things move, the way you move, great. You can, you can't, you know, that's fine. And the same thing goes with screenshot. I can take a screenshot by pressing Shift F11. I haven't really bothered with that. If I wanted to take a screenshot, I would, I'm usually using the window screenshot. And I'm just quickly getting a screenshot of my win Inkscape window. Or I'm actually just going to like render my image in the render in the image in the Inkscape tab in Revit. So I wouldn't necessarily use that screenshot but again you're welcome to do that you can change that to whatever you want all of this you're free to change but I will say after all that I wouldn't necessarily change it you know it, this is this is how Inkscape is working with out of the box and I have never felt that I've needed to move faster or slower I say I would say the one thing if you're if you feel that you're having trouble navigating first go watch my navigation video I did a decent video on how to navigate throughout Inkscape. So that'll be in the cards up there right now. But besides that, you know, if you're trying to learn, yeah, maybe you would move the movement speed down a little bit so you can get, you know, you're not moving as fast and flying across the screen. But I've honestly never updated any of these, never changed these, never needed to change this information. So moving right along, devices. This is kind of interesting because if you do happen to have a 3D TV, this could be kind of cool. And so this is stereo mode and by default it's disabled because you know we're mostly not working in uh, 3D TVs, 3D screens. But if you are, you have the option of changing one eye to be half the width. And so basically you're seeing half and half. And that works out because the 3D screen will you know take care of the rest. And if I put half width per eye, you'll see once I go back to Inkscape, it actually does show half of the width in each of my eyes. <laughs> so I can actually, you can still navigate all the same. It's a little more difficult, but you know, you can, you can start to see how if a 3D TV were to actually take this image, it could put it together and make it look 3D. Now I, that said, there's the option to make it full width, which means you're seeing the full width in each eye. Again, that's a different, it's a different setting in a, in a 3D TV. So choose the one accordingly if you have a 3D TV. I don't, I'm going to keep it disabled. Performance, auto resolution, you know, these are all on by default and I would probably leave them on, but auto resolution, just, it's going to match the, the size of your window for Inkscape. It's going to match, match the resolution just so it looks clear. It's going to take your Inkscape settings. If you set it to a particular resolution or quality, it's going to keep that grass rendering. It's kind of interesting. So you have the option of adding the keyword grass to any material that you have in your applied in your Revit model and Inkscape will pick that up and actually apply grass to it. There's there's some pre-made 
materials that kind of populate within Enscape based on how you've named some of the Enscape or some of the Re uh, Revit materials. And there's a whole separate article on that. I think there's there's different waters, different grasses, but this is basically saying, do you want the grass to render? Do you if you have grass in one of your materials, do you want it to render? Yeah, I do. Great. RTX ray tracing, that's nice. If you happen to have an NVIDIA card, uh, NVIDIA video card, video graphics card, that will basically enhance the quality of your experience in Enscape. So I would always leave that check. Even if you don't, I happen to not, you're fine leaving it on. It's not going to matter. Network, I won't touch on this at all, but if, you're, if your firm works with a proxy server, you'll have to go into these specific settings and actually test your connection after you've uh, dealt with that. And that's going to be a complete IT thing. Most of the time, I don't see this being done where I am. It's, I'm not using any of this at all. There's no real need to. You can choose to send anonymous usage data if you want. doesn't matter. You can get notified if there's a new preview version available. I like to get notified. That's nice. Licensing, I won't go to... I won't show you my license, but it's just, it's licensing. It is what it is. Preferences, show sound sources, great. You don't always have the option to do this if you have sounds in your scene. Um, I can't say I've ever put in sounds because I've just, I've never created a type of presentation that would require sounds, although I could see how it would be beneficial. So there you can, you can see, like get a visual of where those sound sources are, where they are. You can show on-screen help, which is basically whenever we launched Inkscape, you could see little tips that would show you, you know, hey, if you press H, it'll hide the the information in Inkscape. But I hope if you stick around and watch other videos of mine, because my goal is that you won't actually need to see any of the on-screen help, and that I can help you more than that can. You can show the first steps window, but that's just the first steps of getting into Inkscape and starting it up, get it installed, never needed, to, never needed to deal with that, just so you know. Suppress critical graphics driver's warnings. You know, uh, you know, turn this on if you want, or not, I don't know. Um, I would kind of like to know if things are going wrong and maybe they're, I've got my video card and it's about to explode. It might be nice if Enscape is able to tell me that ahead of time just so I know and I can leave my apartment, that would be nice. But in this case, again, do what you want. That is what it is. You've got language. Actually, with uh, Enscape 2.7, you're able to choose German, so you could actually look at it in German if you want. Settings management. Looks like there's a bunch of nothing. You can actually supposedly import legacy settings, but I haven't had to deal with that or haven't really needed to. Uh, I personally like all the settings that they have now because there's a lot more and they're more versatile so I, I really don't see myself needing to deal with importing legacy settings but hey it's there and if it works or if it's not grayed out you can you can do that if you it looks like if you've got an older format of Inkscape you can use that and then finally Revit this is pretty important so if you look at up here at the top it says material selection it's currently set to appearance and then you have the option of choosing appearance or graphics. So what is what is this? And what if I change this? What is it going to do? Well, it's basically where Enscape is pulling your materials from and the graphics and how they're going to display all your materials. And you might say, well, yeah, I've applied this material in Enscape, so it makes sense that it would just show the material, of course. That makes perfect sense, although if you look into Revit, we do have different options. We've got a hidden line, a shaded, consistent colors, and realistic that we would use on a regular basis. So what is the material selection? We've got appearance and graphics. If we go into our materials in the Manage tab, we can see that we have both a graphics and an appearance tab. And let's look at what each one of those might hold. So for this material, the graphics tab has this color and it would have hatch pattern data. So if we look at appearance, we can see this is where we would input all of our specific image maps to act to create it as an image, a physical material that's actually realistic looking. And this is what's going to populate in realistic. If you have your, your view set in Revit to realistic. 
So again, these tabs, graphics and appearance, are directly correlated to the material selection, appearance, and graphics. So basically, if you want to see your realistic materials with all the texture maps and everything, keep this on appearance. It's going to pull the information from the materials in the appearance tab versus graphics. If I choose graphics, now it's going to pull all these consistent colors into my Inkscape, and I'm just going to see a bunch of colors. And maybe you want to do that for a particular reason or a presentation. Maybe you want to do that during a, a, a schematic design presentation where you still have all these nice looking materials but you, you're not ready to show off what they might look like. You just want to see colors. That's one thing you could do. You could change this to graphics. I always keep replace ArcVision content because that will be an example of that would be like all these trees. They're, they're InScape assets, but they're, they're considered to be ArcVision, which is just a, a different company of, of models. And so they're using all these models and replacing those and rendering those in InScape once it launches. And for this final setting, enable Live Revit Camera. I'm going to actually need to go to the split view here, and you'll see why I want to do this in just a second. So what is enable Live Revit Camera? So if you remember, you can actually press M over here, and you can get like a map layout, M for map. You can get like your floor plan. You can see where you are on your floor plan. That's kind of nice. But it's got something similar to that in Revit if you enable Live Revit Camera. So I'm going to close, and it will close this window. So I'm going to click this. It's going to enable the live Revit camera. And you can see every time I move, I get like a little flickering telling me that it's doing something. But I'm not necessarily sure what it is until I go to my floor plan. So in this case, let's go to level one. And I can see now as I move around that this little camera icon shows right there. And it actually moves as I move and updates based on my location. It also is pointing in the right direction and just makes things a little easier as to maybe showing a client you know what this looks like what the perspective is and it's again it's the same as this map up here but it it's a little less janky because i can look at my floor plan for real and you know you could almost use it to where you have revit in full screen and you're just working off of moving based on where your camera is you know that's kind of nice and it's something i haven't used all that much just because I rarely sit down with someone else and walk through something like this. I usually just do a presentation, uh, walk through that way, or just some images. But that, nonetheless, that is there. And you have to go back to the general settings in Revit, and you can disable that, and then that camera will go away. So that's going to do it for the general settings for Inkscape. And yeah, the last thing I will say, honestly, I... <laughs> It's not a great reason to mess with a lot of those. If you want to customize stuff, great. If you if you need to adjust some of the hotkeys or the movement speeds, whatever, perfect. Do that kind of at your own risk. But that will do it for the general settings. If you stuck around this long, you're awesome. You're really awesome. Also, if you did learn something, please demolish that like button, and it tells me that you did. Finally, if you wouldn't, please subscribe. It certainly helps me a lot. Change that phase of the subscribe button to existing it always helps me out i've got lots more inscape videos coming out in the very near future if you have any specific questions about inscape revit whatever it might be please leave those in the comment section below i sure hope to see you in the next video have a wonderful day and thanks for watching